important step in that. So part of the reason, part of the way he's spreading the word is through things like this, and also through um, working with Chris Barrett there at the camera. He's uh, been recording a lot of YouTube videos. He's got how many do you have now? Probably 30, 30, yeah, 20 or 30 YouTube videos. So if you search for Habib and uh, Islam, you'll probably find them all there. So I guess uh, no further delay. I'll let you read. All right, thanks, Kevin. Okay, thanks for everyone for coming here. And just so you know, Kevin is a great guy, despite uh, appearances. Um, he's, he's very, very articulate. He's a good student. You know, I told him to dress up for this event, but, uh, you know, he's just one of these uh, modern democratic people that does not listen. You know. Did you hear back here? Somebody said he did. Oh, that's dressing up? Okay. Whatever. Um, Okay, but tonight, uh, hopefully we are, uh, thank you all for coming. Uh, tonight, hopefully, we are going to subject you to a feast of Islamic poetry. You hear a lot of things about uh, Islam in the media, a lot of it uh, negative. Uh, hopefully today you will see some of the more beautiful dimensions of Islam. And a number of people have very kindly agreed to help me read. Okay, we have uh, Dr. Joe Barbariz here at the front. We have uh, Dr. Fitter, who's hiding somewhere in the crowd, but you will see him. Okay, and uh, we have uh, Dr. Ledoux, who is on her way. Then we have uh, Alicia DeMarco, who's a graduate student. We have uh, Caitlin Marmion, who's an English student. Sarah Stodjko. Uh, we have Hira Farouk. And um, we have Nasreen Khan. So, uh, they're all helping us to read. And uh, so, without any further ado, um, I'm going to begin this. Now, uh, Islamic poetry is a, uh, obviously a very broad designation, and all of this is going to be in translation, of course. But um, Islamic poetry derives its initial inspiration, of course, from the Muslim holy book, the Quran. And um, Again, you often hear of passages in the Quran which are violent or offensive or whatever. We very rarely are uh, exposed to the beautiful passages in the Quran. So I want to start by reading a passage from the Quran which uh, I rendered into English. Uh, now, I, I don't want to be pretentious. My Arabic is not that good, so uh, a guy who knew Arabic pretty well helped me. But, uh, but it is my rendering into English. And it's a passage on light. <clears throat> God is the light of the heavens and of the earth. His light is a parable of a lamp within a niche. Without the lamp, a glass, haloed as a brilliant star, lit from an olive tree, blessed, whose soil is neither east nor west, its very oil would shine forth, though untouched by fire, light upon light. God raises to his light whom he will. He engenders parables for men, he whose knowing is beyond horizon. His light abides in houses, sanctified for the adoration of his name. There is he glorified, morning and evening, by those whom neither trade nor profit can divert from remembrance of their God or from steadfastness in charity and prayer, whose sole fear is for the day when heart and vision awake in a new world, where God rewards their deeds, giving evermore from his grace, for God furnishes measurelessly those whom he will. Okay, our next reader is uh, Hira Farouk, and she's going to read out some of the sayings of the Prophet Muhammad. <coughs> the world is green and beautiful, and God has appointed you his stewards over it. The best richness is the richness of the soul. The best provision is piety. 
The most profound philosophy is the fear of God, the exalted, the great. God is gentle and, love gen and loves gentleness in all things. Charity is incumbent upon every human limb, every day upon which the sun rises, to bring about a just reconciliation between two contestants is charity. A good word is charity. To remove obstacles in the street is charity. Smiling upon the face of your brother is charity. The world and all things in it are valuable, but the most valuable thing in the world is a virtuous woman. He is not a believer who eats his fill while his neighbor remains hungry by his side. O oh Lord, keep me in the company of the poor. Let me die in poverty and raise me with the poor on the day of judgment. I'm going to read a poem of my own. It's an Islamic hymn in praise of God. It's just go with him. Glorious are you in your aloneness. Your pale, eternal splendor beckons, in whose depthless light my shadow burns. Hold me in your moving stillness. Let my night pass in your day. Sublime are you, whose beauty burns in all being, exalting all substance through the far corners, who breathed your light first on the face of formlessness and last on the forms of human reason. Serene are you in your otherness. Your yearning depth embraces me. Your knowing pales before itself, enthroned in realmlessness. Your wisdom's endless sea is adrift in my tears. Absolute are you in your purity. The pavilions of night wear your perfect form. From east and west your lanterns rise, light upon light. World upon world are you, knower of destiny, harbinger of time's still path, who finds me bow in the rhythms of fate. Your splendor it is in both worlds, your light it fills the far corners of being. Here all is you, there all is you. And now we're going to have Nasreen Khan, who's going to read out uh, a very small poem by uh, a lady called Rabia al-Basri, who was a mystic of the 8th century. Come on, Nasreen. Um, this poem is by Rabia al-Basri, and she was a Sufi mystic poem in the 8th century, born in Iraq. and. Um, she was most famous for a story in which um, she, couldn't, she wanted to perform the pilgrimage at um, Kaaba, but she was unable to find the means to get there. So the um, story goes that um, God brought the Kaaba to her. And here is her poem. Okay. O oh Allah, if I worship you for fear of hell, burn me in hell. And if I worship you, in hope of paradise, exclude me from paradise. But if I worship you for your own sake, grudge me not your everlasting beauty. Yeah. The uh, gentleman who just walked in is my karate instructor. Uh, so um, I'll try to behave myself. <laughs> No, and, and, and I try not to make any silly jokes. Hey, he's um, late. you got a point on him. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay, last, <laughs> okay, our next reader is uh, the president of the English Students' Organization, Sarah Scotchko, who's going to read a poem by a cool guy, Arab guy of the 8th century, called Abu Nawas. Music line, one, please. Music line, one. This is called The Rake. Abandoned camps, pineapple breasts untouched, camels too young to die in battle, boys grown hairy, stallions lost, 
Lovers parting with caravans at dawn. Nuts. That's all stuff for poetry, unlike my sorrow. For be there any more sorrow than mine? The prophet, may his name be ever blessed, bans wine, and worse, the magistrates enforce it. Mix it with tears, yours, mine, I don't care whose, I'll drink and wait. Night watchmen to pick me up and bastonado me, guardians of my purity. Fools, why not let me be, drinking with every toy in town? Don't thwart God, the world could end tomorrow, with you regretting purity, while I will surely be worthy of his clemency. Okay, and um, our next reader is uh, Kalima Barkley, who's going to read a poem from the Spanish uh, Arab, Spanish Islamic poet and thinker, Ibn Hazm. Twice times then is now. You ask how old am I? Reached by the sun, my teeth all gone. How old am I? I have no guide, no calendar inside, except a smile and a little kiss she gave me by surprise upon my brow. And now, this little while, is all my life and all my reality, how long or brief it seems to be. I'm sure everyone in this room uh, as heard of the Persian poet Omar Khayyam. Uh, of course, in the Islamic world, he was famous uh, not as a poet, but as a mathematician and astronomer. And it was, of course, Edward, uh, Fitz Edward Fitzgerald, who in the 19th century um, brought out an absolutely delicious translation of the Rabayat. A Rabayat is a four-line poem and the plural of Rabai is Rabayat. So he brought out a publication of the Rabayat of uh, Omar Khayyam, and he changed it around quite a lot, but I think what the result is uh, unsurpassed. So i just like to, I don't think any reading of Islamic poetry will be complete without uh, a taste of this. So I want to read out uh, a few of these. Awake, for morning in the bowl of night has flung the stone that puts the stars to flight. And lo, the hunter of the east has caught the sultan's turret in a noose of light. Here's, a, here's one which a lot of people know. It's about love and being alone with one's love in the idyllic countryside. Here with a loaf of bread beneath the bough, a flask of wine, a book of verse, and thou beside me singing in the wilderness. And wilderness is paradise enough. How sweet is mortal sovereignty, thinks some. Others, how blessed the paradise to come. Ah, take the cash in hand and wave the rest. Oh, the brave music of a distant drum. Can you imagine this guy wrote this uh, a thousand years ago? And, you know, possibly he could be shot for, <laughs> for if someone did, wrote that today, you know. But there's so much in the Islamic tradition which is so far ahead of where we are now. The worldly hope men set their hearts upon turns ashes, or it prospers <coughs> and anon, like snow upon the desert's dusty face, lightning a little hour or two is gone. Alike for those who for today prepare, and those that after tomorrow stare. A Mosin from the Tower of Darkness cries, Fools, your reward is neither here nor there. This is my favorite, I think. Ah, uh, come with the old Khayyam and leave the wise to talk. One thing is certain, that life flies. One thing is certain, and the rest is lies. The flower that once has blown forever dies. <laughs> 